gray stone of native rock, left midway in the square of our small market village, was the home and center of these joys. And when returned after long absence, thither I repaired, I found that it was split and gone to build a smart assembly room that perked and flared with wash and rough cast, elbowing the ground which had been ours. But let the fiddle scream and be ye happy yet, my friends. I know that more than one of you will think with me off these starry nights, and that old dame from whom the stone was named who there had sate and watched her table with its huckster's wares assiduous through the length of sixty years. With new delight, this chiefly did I view my gray-haired dame, saw her go forth to church or other work of state, equipped in monumental trim, short velvet cloak, her bonnet of the like, a mantle such as Spanish cavaliers wore in old time. Her smooth domestic life, affectionate without uneasiness. Her talk, her business pleased me, and no less her clear though shallow stream of piety that ran on Sabbath days a fresher course. With thoughts unfelt till now, I saw her read her Bible on the Sunday afternoons, and loved the book, and when she had dropped asleep, and made a pillow of it for her head. Well I call to mind, t'was at an early age, ere I had seen nine summers, when upon the mountain slope the frost and breath of frosty wind had snapped the last autumnal crocus, t'was my joy to wander half the night among the cliffs and the smooth hollows, where the woodcocks ran along the open turf. In thought and wish that time, my shoulder all with springs hung, I was a fell destroyer. On the heights scudding away from snare to snare, I applied my anxious visitation hurrying on, still hurrying, hurrying onward. Moon and stars were shining over my head. I was alone, and seemed to be a trouble to the peace that was among them. Sometimes it befell in these night wanderings, but a strong desire overpowered my better reason, and the bird which was the captive of another's toils became my prey. And when the deed was done, I heard among the solitary hills low breathings coming after me and sounds of undistinguishable motion, steps almost as silent as the, the turf they trod. There was a copse, an upright bank of wood and woody rock, that opposite our rural dwelling stood, in which a sparkling patch of diamond light was in bright weather duly to be seen on summer afternoons within the wood at the same place. T'was doubtless nothing more than a black rock, which, what with constant springs, glistened glistered, far seen from out its lurking place, as soon as ever the declining sun had spit me. Beside our cottage hearth, sitting with open door, a hundred times upon this luster have I gazed, that, that seemed to have some meaning which I could not find, and now it was a burnished shield, I fancied, suspended over a knight's tomb, who lay inglorious, buried in the dusky wood, an entrance now into some magic cave, or palace for a fairy of the rock. Nor would I, though not certain whence the cause, of the effulgence, thither have repaired without a precious bribe, and day by day and month by month I saw the spectacle, nor ever once have visited the spot unto this hour. Thus sometimes were the shapes of willful fancy grafted upon feelings of the imagination, and they rose in with accordingly in work accordingly.